We'll be right back at, from the Node Summit. Hi, I'm Alex Williams of SiliconANGLE, where we are the leader in tech event coverage and here today with John Sheehan and I see a friend of ours off to the side, Stephen O'Grady. Can you come on and join us? <laughs> so Stephen's going to join us. He's, Stephen is a well-known analyst in the, in, the, in the community with Redbunk. They are f famous for their being extremely focused on developers. I don't know if you guys have met before. Hey, John, nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. So um, why don't we just talk about what you guys did, some of the impressions that you get from this event. Um, you guys both were on stage today, uh, in, over the past two days. So John, why don't we start with you. What are some of your impressions of, of Node.js, its maturity, what you're seeing of Node, um, what gets you excited about where this is going, or, or, or maybe not? Okay. I think on the maturity level, I think we've reached the point where it's not only technically mature, but also sort of the ecosystem is starting to mature around it in a way that uh, it's no longer maybe a detriment or hard to find people to work on Node. So there's plenty of developers, there's plenty of service providers, there's a lot of other resources other than just a good solid technology that are really starting to to take Node to the next level and, and help it thrive. And I think that's been the, the most impressive thing that I've seen is just all of the surrounding uh, ecosystem type things. Steven? Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly I, I would agree. Um, you know, one of the interesting sort of phenomena we observed over the last year, um, you know, we started writing about Node, I want to say in 2009, you know, maybe 2010. You know, so the sort of ascent has been sort of rapid, you know, in that time frame. It's become very popular, and I would certainly agree that it's, um, you know, hitting mainstream status, you know, in the sense that we see, um, you know, real sort of big established uh, businesses, you know, like a Microsoft is a platinum sponsor here, right? So that's sort of indicative of the traction that the platform has. But the interesting thing is, is that certainly over the last year, um, as I said, one of the phenomena that we've observed is, um, you know, Node sort of hitting that sort of quote unquote trough of disillusionment, you know, in the sense that, you know, there were a couple articles uh, that came out, uh, one of them being sort of Node uh, causes cancer and, you know, all these sorts of uh, sort of negative backlash types pieces. This process usually takes a lot longer. Um, it usually takes sort of multiple years to sort of come in and um, to reach that to reach that trough to reach it, but also to go through it. And this and is so the, they're going through it. Are they well, going? you know the the um, you know, I, I think you could sort of argue, you know, to what extent you know they're through it or not. But certainly from our perspective, we haven't seen quite that same coverage. Um, so you know, I, I would make the argument that you know, we may in fact have spit back out the other side. Um, hmm. And have already sort of traversed that trough of disillusionment, which, you know, if that ends up, you know, proving true, you know, it has to be one of the sort of quickest, quickest times that's ever happened. Huh. Well, I mean, everything about Node is happening quicker than that's right. than most other frameworks in history. I mean, the releases yeah. come faster. That's like, right. Platform as a service sprung up faster. I mean, everything around it is is probably moving faster than anything I think I've ever seen. Yes. So would you see that in your data that the ecosystem in general is growing as fast as Node? Yeah. Or is Node yeah. growing faster than the rest of the ecosystem? It is no. Uh, so our internal metrics at Redmond, you know, we we measure sort of traction on our content. We you know look at a variety of different sources. You know, GitHub, Stack Overflow, a variety of different developer communities. Um, yeah. Node basically crushes, you know, really any of the other technologies that we cover. Um, you know, and this is. You know, really, I'd have to go back and actually look, but I think it's over an 18-month period. Um, it's still, you know, occupying three of the top five spots, you know, in terms of our internal metrics. Really? So it's always performed very well. The interesting thing is, is that it's not just Node. You know, and I, I mentioned this when I was on stage uh, yesterday, that if you go and look at the number of modules that have been created um, and add-ins that have been created around the platform in a very short span of time, um, you know, community traction and support for the platform is it's really just remarkable. Um, what are the other two? You said you know, it's in the top five. Oh, three of the top five. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I honestly don't know. I'd have to go. I mean, and a lot of it depends on uh, are we looking at 18 months? Are we looking at a six month slice? Right. Um, you know, because if I remember right, I think in 2010, um, at least one, if not two of the other two were associated. Um, with the uh, Oracle and Google lawsuit around Java, mm -hmm. you know, because that was very much top of mind for a lot right. of developers that we speak with and so on. But again, it just, it really looks at 
Uh, it depends heavily on you know which precise time frame we're taking a look at. Well, the world weaves in strange and mysterious ways, doesn't it? And, <laughs> and Twilio has adopted Node.js. So we don't use it internally, but we have adopted it. Through, uh, through your developer through, community. Right, right, through the ecosystem. Like, we're trying to support it as well as anything else that we support. I mean, we love HTTP in all forms, and, and you know, Node is the current hotness when it comes to HTTP. So we want to make sure that we have all of the resources there that we can to, uh, to provide Node developers the same class experience as everyone else. How do you see it as the current hotness? Um, it's really sprung up in like our support requests or uh, what we see at hackathons with what people are building with. Uh, a lot of people will start new projects these days and use Node. It's, it's as common as anything else. Um, our unofficial community contributed helper library has as many GitHub watchers as our Python library does. So uh, the Python library has been around uh, for a couple of years now uh, and it's matured and the Node one has sprung up uh, just about a year ago, I think. I mean, it's really just taken off. So like we see it in all sorts of different areas uh, where we're starting to have to uh, make sure that we have uh, the knowledge on our end to make sure that we support uh, the people that want to use it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you know, you think about GitHub, right? And everything is just faster, though, to some extent, yeah. isn't it? Everything uh, is just, you can just do things so much faster than you ever could before. Yeah. And it seems like that Node.js has that combination effect where the level, the skill sets, you, you still need good skill sets, mm -hmm. but there is a much lower barrier to entry. Isn't there? Are you finding that? Uh, barrier to entry, I, I don't, I mean, I mean yes, to some extent. JavaScript, people who you know, no, know how JavaScript is, and. I think one of the interesting things to me about Node is the fact that um, it, there are a variety of sort of frameworks that are associated with languages. You know, we've all heard of you know, things like Rails and Django and you know, all these other lang uh, language frameworks that are very popular, Spring for Java. Um, the interesting thing to me about Node is, is that it, it is really fundamentally sort of a different approach, um, you know, in terms of sort of pushing a, um, you know, in, in asynchronous sort of, um, in asynchronous model, which is, you know, just a different way of doing things. So I think in terms of making it easy to use, you know, one of the things that it attempts to solve and really for certain workloads, right, this isn't across the board, but it attempts to sort of ease the pain of, um, you know, trying to sort of build applications at scale for data-driven uh, workloads, um, you know, bit-driven workloads and so on, uh, you know, by, you know, essentially trying to take, um, you know, problems of con con uh, concurrency out of the equation. Right? Well, the problems you know, of concurrency seem to be one of the issues. I'm sorry? Concurrency, we were just talking with uh, Theo of, um, Oh, he has a big consulting firm. He does a search conference. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah, Theo Schultz and I go, yeah. And he was talking about the issues with con that is one of the issues with Node.js is concurrency because it can you can run into trouble a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just as I said, it takes a different approach, right? I mean, it's single threaded by nature, right. right? In other words, that's the sort of model right. that it prescribes. That's the model that um, well, I mean, basically, it implements you know, as part of the framework. So, um, it, it's you know, as I mentioned before, it's very appropriate for certain workloads, um, is less appropriate for other workloads, uh, and it just depends on, all right, what, what are you trying to do? Um, because, yeah, I mean, I think for a certain class of workload, it makes, it definitely lowers the barrier to entry, makes things easier. Great. I, I mean, along those same lines, like, one of the things that Node really excels at is that you don't need to, like, have some separate skill, some corresponding skill to go with it. Like, uh, for instance, you want to get started in PHP, you have to configure Apache and get that set up. You can't just start with, with PHP and run it standalone yet. In the next version, they're going to embed a web server. But the fact that Node is a web server or can be a web server, mm -hmm. sort of, they put an entire working example on their front page that you can copy and paste. You download it, you just do that, and you're running. You don't need a separate configuration thing like that. And I think that makes it really easy for people to tinker with and toy with. And uh, we found, especially with our API, which is also easy to tinker with and toy with, that that's really uh, a really strong uh, catalyst for people building bigger and better things that aren't tinkering and toying. That, that the lower it is and the less ceremony there is to get started, uh, the more likely people will build a lot of things and that one of those ideas will take off and become something significant. And I think Node really hits on that really well. Well, we, we've all been to these um, startup contests and you can get pretty cynical about them because the companies there could be pretty bad, right? Yeah. But the companies here have actually been pretty impressive. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I've seen some companies up there that are doing some things that are actually really pretty cool. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Any um, favorites? 
Uh, not, I wouldn't necessarily say they're favorites. I, I think two of the ones that interest me specifically, um, actually I just saw, are um, uh, Geek List and, and Markover. And primarily because, you know, one of the things that, being a developer-focused firm, one of the things that we uh, you know, sort of deal with, um, you know, certainly analyze and comment on and so on, is the difficulty for um, identifying resources. It's really difficult to hire. Um, and hiring is, it doesn't matter how big your company is, how many people you have dedicated to it, it's a tremendously difficult process. Right. Um, so a lot of sort of, you know, a lot of um, companies are turning to things like GitHub to try to do it more quantitatively because at the end of the day, a resume is not terribly useful you know, no. for assessing programmer skill. So, you know, having these resources like a geek list um, or in this case a markover, you know, for uh, the design side of the crowd, um, you know, I, I, those are going to be interesting, I think, you know, purely for, I mean, yes, they're useful to the people that use them, but from my perspective as an analyst, they're going to be just as useful for, all right, how do I, you know, sort of more quickly and efficiently identify resources that I might want to work with or hire? Markover was pretty impressive. I mean, we don't really see many tools like that that are meant for the design well, community. And did you, did you catch the bit, uh, um, to know some of the people just uh, tweeted this, that uh, that's a senior in college. That girl who yeah, presented. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally she goes to Notre Dame or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Good for yeah, her. Yeah, it's fa fantastic. I think Markover is like uh, sort of on the precipice of what like seems to be a lot of people are working on is that like the next generation of real time collaboration, right? And she had the Skype window overlaid, you know, next yeah. to the annotation yeah. for the video in the audio chat, but like it doesn't really make sense for that to be separate. Well, that should be in every application. Every right. app should be in, empowered to build real-time communication into the apps. I mean, that's what we're trying to tackle. And I mean, she really like illustrated how powerful that was that we were going to collaborate. We were going to zoom in on these 10 pixels and talk about it over video. And uh, we want to enable another generation yeah. of apps to do that. And I think we're really just on the front doorstep of, yeah. of, of things like Node and things like Twilio enabling those types of apps to be even more powerful. And it had, the, you know, and it had kind of a, a sense of an activity stream integrated into it as well, which mm -hmm. is just very easy to look at and very sure. easy, to, you know, and then be able to look at the, the designs themselves. Well, I think we're getting pretty close to um, our time here, so I want to thank you guys both for spending, you know, a few minutes just chatting about Node.js, and we'll talk to you guys soon. All right, thanks, Alex. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. thanks.